awesome. Welcome to a cup of creativity in the literary lounge in the place where writing doesn't have to suck. I am your host, Kendra Stace, and today I would like to speak to topics of writing in different genres. What, what do I mean by this? I'll give us some examples, and then also kind of like by taking part in this exercise, how that can actually strengthen the craft of yours. But before I dive in, let me give a couple of shout outs. Uh, the first being the Advanced Learning Library here in Wisconsin. I want to thank them for giving me access to their AV studio. It is a place, I can talk. It is a place where you can come take in like three hours at a time. They got all the equipment. It's got the Eden Zim white light. It's got a beautiful lime green wall, which I kind of dig. So I want to thank them for all of their help. I really appreciate that. And then secondly, I want to talk about my passion, um, Stace Publishing we are a nonprofit publishing company um, who focuses on underrepresented voices. What's kind of cool is that together we are the audience. We are also the authors, we are the storytellers, and we are also creating the content. My main goal, again, with Stace Publishing is to build a community to help underrepresented voices. Which, honestly, represented, underrepresented could be anybody. It could be pretty much anybody in the state of Kansas. It could be women. It could be a people of color. It could be, um, it, I mean, anyone. If you have a story, I think it needs to be told. Because I think every voice matters. We learn everything about our world through story and through words, through word of mouth, whether, I mean, depending on the medium, we always have to have a story. So with Space Publishing, I definitely want to stress that you know we have a little hashtag of supporting the writing journey. This is not just write writers. It's not people who just write stories. It's the people who help collect them. It is the people who you know the talent, the various talent that help the um, website and organize the social media and does um, strategic planning. All of these talents matter, just like the voices. Um, because every single story deserves to be heard, to be heard, every single story. And that's kind of my goal. That's kind of our mission is to collect all of those stories so they can be heard. Um, what's also kind of great about my company is we get to inspire others. And at the same time, we are inspiring. I mean, it would be the greatest feeling. So if you are interested in jumping on our lovely mission and helping us out, contact us. Shoot me an email. Go to our website. It's space, S-A-Y-C-H-E, spacepublishing.org. You can check out some of the programs, which I, oh my gosh, I think we have a little bit, I don't know, it's, it's going to fit every single person, right? Whether it is a family member or a small town or a teacher or somebody who just wants to write and just doesn't know where to start. I have all of these things that we can offer you. So definitely check it out. Before I start discussing about writing in different genres, I would like to have our moderator. <coughs> Are you ready? Sweet. Okay. Today, I will face you. Today, I will be brave. Today, I will struggle. Today, I will grow. Today, I will get through it. Woohoo! Huzzah! Huzzah! Yes, yes. I wish I had like um, all the little voice effects that you can have like in Hamilton Hill Hill Valley. I, I just think that the mantra is like, like it just made me laugh. So today I kind of actually do that um, before I start my classes, before I start my projects. So yeah, give yourself a mantra. Say it, say it loud, say it proud. Keep your hand on your heart, right? Make these words matter. Now speaking of words matter, mattering, ooh, I like that in there. Making this, here's my transition. Here's my thing is why should I have you write in a different genre. I mean, I think maybe you're having an idea, maybe, like my students, I always ask them to like write with sigh rather than an idea, right? Maybe a little sass on the side. <laughs> um, I would like us to practice our storytelling skills. And really, being a storyteller is extremely important. I mean, it, it has been like this all through the ages and it's, <coughs> excuse me, it's not any different now. So, I mean, if you are the storyteller, 
we were extremely important. And so one of the exercises that I like to do in this institution is to try to create, you know, write in a different genre. Now, last week I talked about style studies, and I even, you know, discussed comfort character before that. But if we can try to try a different genre, you are only strengthening your writing muscle. Um, and I will also tell you, um, it, you know, by doing this, it kind of shows an example of your creativity, right? Creativity is never ending. It is a never ending well of just awesome. You know, it shows you your, your breadth of knowledge. And I will also say, my lovely writers and creators, I'm not going to ask you to do something that I haven't done before. I, I'm not saying I'm the best writer because I'm not. I'm not the smartest person. I'm not the brightest bulb. I'm not the sharpest tool, whatever, whatever. Um, but I'm not going to ask you to do something that I didn't do in writing. So one of the things that I try, um, so I teach English. And I know that I should, you know, the people that listen to me all the time, I know what I'm going to say. So um, I teach high school English. And then I also, every single grade level. And then I also teach a rhetoric of horror. And I teach Korean. And I love all of these classes. But before my, um, you know, as I'm prepping for my horror class, it, you know, one, I am a research junkie. Oh, my gosh, you can never get me into good writing. Uh, just call me Alice because I will go down any rabbit hole. I will find anything. And it's just I think it's just fascinating. Um, as a curious person, um, my hunger is I'm never satisfied. I'm insatiable. You know, and so I love that I can research and find different things. Anyway, while I was researching and preparing my rhetoric of horror class, I thought to myself, I'm like, at the end of the at the end of this course, I'm at you know, because here we are, we are analyzing um, different types of media and different types of horror stories. Um, I wanted them to write their own story, you know, because we study different tropes and we study different genres, or, you know, different types. Of, of horror, and then we also, you know, try to connect what kind of societal fear are we seeing when we read these stories or, or watch these movies or listen to these podcasts, etc. Um, anyway, at the end, the very last project is that I have them write their own horror story. They have to pick a, they have to pick one of the tropes. I only have like five, you know, the Fab Five. They have to pick a trope, and then they also have to pick a societal fear. And then write a you know a relatively short story at some point, which may sound like a lot. You may like what? Nope, it's gonna you'll breathe your ears. Anyway, I decided I should probably do this myself if I'm gonna you know that's if I'm gonna teach it. I should probably know how to do it. Well, um, I have written a l many many things over my career. I have written academic articles. I mean, I've had them published. So I've written po I have written poetry. I have written kind of a memoir of sorts. I have written, um, oh my goodness, a little bit of everything, you know, journals or reflective such and such. So, but I have not tried writing a horror story. And it, pardon the pun, it kind of scares me. <laughs> you know, I'm like, I can analyze the hell out of something. And I can talk and talk and talk and talk, but I really need to, you know, put my writing muscle to the test. So forming something and getting ideas, that was not a challenge for me. But writing in a different style and writing in a different genre, I think definitely made me a stronger writer. And so I ended up writing a horror story. I thought it was scary to me um, about a beekeeper who, you know, traveled around with like a farmer's helper, which is not something I can find at all. That was my living. Um, that was, I did that on purpose. And what you don't find out is that she, you don't know if it's a demon or this really, really effed up inner force that sabotages her life. And so to me, that is terrifying. And it, it, it expanded me, it challenged me. And at first, I'm not, I'm not gonna lie, I, it was bumpy at first. And then once I got to know, once I played around with that inner voice, that inner demon or whatever you wanna call it, that I decided not to name it. Um, yeah, it just flowed right on out, and it was super easy to write. Um, I really, I thanked my students because I had them read it. You know, if I'm gonna, if they're gonna share it with me, I have to. I feel like I should. It should be, you know, same. I, I should do the same exact thing. I'm like, if they want to see me write, I will write. If they, if I'm gonna put myself out there and I'm gonna ask them to do the same thing, I I think that's a win for me. So when I did that, um, it really pushed me. 
And it, because it is, it's a different style. So, you know, in the high school English, everybody and their brother makes you write an essay. Hi, essays are not sexy. They're not exciting. But the topic is fantastic. And that part is, to me, is really fun. I love that part. N not necessarily, you know, like, yeah, I can crank those out like there's no tomorrow. But the topic is really, really exciting to me. So it, that gets me going, right? So whenever you're writing in different genres, again, it, you're exercising your language. You're changing your language because clearly writing a poem is different than writing an essay, which is different than writing, you know, nonfiction, which is different than writing, you know, horror or realism or whatever. So I'm going to just give you a couple of famous authors just so you, you know, I'm not just a talking bunk. I, you know, I do some research. Uh, you know, I'm not just throwing, <laughs> I'm not just throwing stuff completely out there. I'm sorry. Um, one of them, th I, that, like, I don't know, I might like, I guess I, I like to like look up different things on the internet. You know, I think Reddit conversations are always kind of entertaining to read. Um, but bec before doing that, I decided to kind of make my own list and then come to the library and see what they had to say. Um, Stephen King, obviously I can't like just pour it, but he's always on my mind. Um, but what's great about Stephen King, he has, writes all sorts of different things. Now, it's not just like the length, right? So he'll wi write a big, two, you know, three-inch thick novel, but he'll also write short stories. He'll write novellas. He wrote a book just on writing, which if you've never re read it, you need to because it's freaking hysterical. Um, he also wrote what's a book that I use as a textbook, The Dance Macabre, and it's just about the horror genre. I mean, oh, my God. Yeah, so he, and he, it, it, it's interesting because you hear his voice in different ways. And well, I do think that he would be really fun just to hang out with. You know, just, just, just pick his brain and just listen to him and just see what kind of stories, you know, that comes out of that brilliant brain of his. So Stephen King would be one, right? So we all know It or Akujo or Carrie or The Shining, all these really famous movies and, and horror books. But, you know, hi, other ones that he's written. Hi, The Green Mile right? Shawshank Redemption. He has all of these different things, and they, you know, it, and it does, it shows how creative and how talented he is. Um, another one, and maybe you don't think of this, I was thinking of Barack Obama. Now, I will tell you, he's my favorite president, and I'm not talking politics at all. I'm not even getting into political aspects. I'm not talking at, at all. The reason I like him is because he's a bully. Like, I could listen to that guy talk all the time. I just listened to his speech writer um, give a talk to Wichita a while back, and I just thoroughly enjoyed it. And while he did have a speech writer, um, he made it his, his own. You know, the, he worked with the speech writer. Um, but I've also read his books, and I've also listened to his interviews. And while I may, may or may not share the same sentiment, I love the way that he can craft his message. You know, I, I think he's kind of like an Abe Lincoln of our time because that dude can tell some stories for sure. Um, Novikov, right, the guy, I'm probably not saying his name right, the person that wrote th the story um, Lolita, which is, if you have not read Lolita, woo, a little steamy, pretty edgy, right? Um, what's kind of cool about him, he had so many different languages. Like um, one thing I did, and I will tell you, I, I started to think about this on the internet. I don't know if it's true that at least he has one, at least one book in every single s hundred sections of the Game Boy Color. I think that's pretty cool. Actually, I should probably ask one of the librarians in here. Uh, you could look at Thomas Hardy. You could look at Shakespeare. Um, Anne Rice. Anne Rice, if anybody has ever read her, she did the whole Interview with a Vampire, had a whole vampire series. I really liked The Witching Hour. Oh, love me some witches. But if you're feeling a little risque, and I, I mean, hey, she's got she has some back there, man. She wrote a whole entire erotic series. It was under a different, like a pseudonym. Um, a pse it was like the Sleeping Beauty series. I think there's like three, three or four of them. And you're like, this was not a Harlequin romance, okay? This was not a Fifty Shades of Grey. This was oh, 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 a completely different level. And knowing who read, you know, who wrote it, you're just like, oh my amazing um another one you could think of i'm kind of jumping all over the place here uh roald dahl right you've got willy wonka you've got james and the giant peach and he's got oh just this wide wide world um another one of my favorites is margaret atwood margaret atwood uh, this is 
think that uh, The Handmaid's Tale um, one of the shows is fabulous. Nothing like the book. Uh, the book, both the first and the second are both just amazing. But she also writes, <coughs> excuse me, she also writes um, short stories. She had a book, uh, it was actually a collection, I think it's called The Furies, and she, she wrote one of the sh short stories there, and it was all about like a knitting circle of like Sharpies, right? So she took all of these, <laughs> it was great, all of these aspects of um, names of creatures that are derogatory toward women, and she turned them into a knitting circle. And I thought that was the funniest freaking thing ever, right? So you're like, oh, should the harpies say that the, <laughs> should the sirens, are the sirens allowed? But what about the people that look like Medusa? Are zombies really good? I just, I don't know. I just thought that was really, really clever. So the thing that, the why, you know, I've given you tons of examples. Why you want to try this exercise is, you know what, I really genuinely think it's going to improve your creativity. When you are bored, which I don't know what that's like, but when you are bored, I really genuinely think that means that you need to spend time with your imagination. Your imagination can be your actual best friend. It is okay to be by yourself and be alone with yourself. Remember, there's a difference between being alone and being near someone else, right? Your thoughts are amazing. Like, I am a pretty creative person, but I will tell you time and time and time again, my students bring that in there, it, which I love. I love seeing that happen. So when you're trying to write for a different genre, whether it is that dreaded essay for English class, uh, enjoy the process, right? Because this is making you a better writer. This is why you're pushing your imagination, right? For example, how can you make that sentence more direct and focused? Right? I, I think entertainment writing goes a long way in that world, right? Um, it's going to diversify your skills. I've had several people in my creative writing classes over the years that are really into journalism. They are great for like a school newspaper or yearbook. That is a complete, it is a glorious skill because I've taught that before too. Um, it is not the same as writing a short story or a poetic story. You know, some people, like I love poetry. I do not thrive in structured poetry. I, some of it, don't get me wrong, I like structure. I love like the, the repetition of three or alliteration. Or, you know, there, there is some structure that I like but I don't necessarily like being so structured like a high school teacher, for example, right? So it, it is a different type of writing. And then the other, well, there's actually a couple things. Um, I think when you're writing in a different style, in a different genre, you know, it, I think it's going to change your perspective on things. So as much as I like to dog on haiku, it's going to make me appreciate poetry. Right, it's going to be a, a really easy transition if I write in Rhetoric Song, or if I want to listen to a familiar like um, rap song, and I can really just really not just appreciate the performance, but really appreciate the craft, the craft of the rhyme scheme, and just the content. You know, what is are are they trying to say? Is it something really really serious, or is it something really funny? You know, like you're going to have like a rap song just based off of uh, I don't know, a Made in Tomb Raider song. I don't know, it could happen. For those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, check out uh, MF Doom. The, the, the dude's rhyme scheme is amazing. But finally, why you want to write in different genres is that you're giving yourself some more creative and exciting freedom. Maybe you can check out, like, you know, again, your essay and your everything is fine. So maybe a hammer is really all you need. But not every job requires a hammer. Some jobs require a needle nose plier right? Or one of a really weird screwdriver. Or maybe you just need one smooth utility tool that has everything, like a Swiss, Swiss army knife. So my goal in asking you to write in a genre, one, challenge yourself. It can be kind of fun. It could be um, really frustrating, and maybe you don't ever want to do it ever, ever again. And that's cool. I, I respect that. <laughs> but I try it out. I do think that you're going to push yourself, and I think that you're going to learn more about yourself, about um, your writing process, and I think you're also going to really enjoy how malleable and how um, fluid language can be, and maybe even how nimble language can be. The great thing about writing, and the great, great thing about life, is you can do anything. You can bury someone alive, you can bury, you can destroy somebody, 
It can be like it, it can be like the epitome of yeah. one drop of water. And maybe that one drop of water is nourishing and magical and magic. Or maybe that one drop of water is like super crazy and it like drives people crazy and then it ends up making something magical happen. Do you see what I'm saying? There's tons of things that you can do with the writing. And so that's kind of what I'm I'm pushing you. I'm pushing you to try some things out. Maybe expand a little. Go in out of our comfort zone because that's where we grow. We grow when we're out of our comfort zone, right? So push yourself a little bit and pick up a couple more tools, right? So I hope that you have enjoyed our chat today about exploring different genres. I, I think, I don't know, I think it's going to be super, super exciting. And um, I really look forward to what you do with this. My name is Kim Bailey. I am your host for Public Creativity and the Literary Unknown at Social Writing Unknown. I look forward to reading your stories. Until next time.